Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome to a post-commentary edition of Let's Play King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. We still have Zeke and Truck in the party, and last time we got Zeke's Key of Truth from Castle Blackroot. Now we have to head to Dark Citadel for Trunks. Why am I doing post-commentary? Well, we have to fight another Warlord at the end of the Dark Citadel, and compared to the other bosses, the other warlords that we fought. The one for Dark Citadel, Warlord Viper, is without a doubt one of the worst bosses I've ever faced, possibly of all time. Now, up until this point, all the warlords that we've had to face were very, very easy. Always because of the fact that there was some sort of thing that I could do or something in the enemy's behavior that I could take advantage of. This one, however, this is where the game's difficulty really takes a nosedive. And I just now noticed that if you face south with Arthur, the lion comes out of the shield and shoots a little shield orb attack. That's pretty nice. Anyway, we have to go north and then west of where we teleported to last time. We have to teleport there again and then make our way back to the underground path entrance. And once we're able to head over there, then we can head to the Dark Citadel. I also refilled on shield orb attacks since last time because I know I'm going to need them. Not because of the boss... Well, partly because of the boss, but partly because of the enemies being annoying again. And here we are in the underground path. We're taking the same route that we did last time. And if you don't remember where to go, well, you can just check out the last video. I pretty much explained it plain as day, just how to get over there. But you can always watch this just for a good refresher on how to get to the fork between the two destinations, being Castle Blackroot and the Dark Citadel, if you want. Remember that it's west for Castle Blackroot and north for the Dark Citadel, and we're going north for the Dark Citadel this time around. Now, when you go north, north here, you will have to meet up with several green knights and a blue one. Or rather, two blue ones. Once you take care of all of them, then you can go up the stairs, and then you can finally enter the Dark Citadel. Now you want to go south, and instead of doors, you have teleporters. They still act as doors, though. You want to go over to the left, and then go north and touch the second teleporter to, to the right that you see. In here is a staff piece, the sixth and final one, but as soon as you g approach it, you will be facing some knights, green and red ones. You want to take care of all of them so that you can grab the staff piece and then get on out of here. But we won't be facing Warlord Viper just yet. Instead, we will have to go down in order to go back to the beginning hallway just after the start. Then we have to go all the way to the right and take the rightmost teleporter. From here, you want to go north. And there will be a shield here. You will have to face these little poison mist clouds, but once you kill them all, you'll be able to get Brick's Magical Shield. And I did not leave that text box on there long enough, but, well, if you pause it, you can see it. Now that we're done here, we can go to the right. And we're going to keep going north until we see a teleporter to the right. You also want to heal Trunk if you have him in your party. You definitely want to bring him in here because he can actually fight the boss for you. And he's a very useful person for this fight compared to Arthur because his defense is much higher compared to, Arthur, compared to Arthur's. And once you go through this, you'll be able to take on War Warlord Viper as Trunk. And he has two forms unlike the other bosses. The first form is a huge snake that basically moves all around the room. And you want to hit him with the shield attack whenever he pops out of the sides. When you start seeing him, like, between all of the columns, like so, you can hit him with the shield attack. 
I like how when you use Trunk Shield attack, it actually shoots ram heads out, just like in the television show. Yeah, I actually saw part of one episode, and it actually wasn't that bad. It was the one where Wally turns on everybody because he felt he didn't protect Arthur when Excalibur got stolen from, I believe, Warlord Blackwing? Anyway, this is why I did the Tool Assisted Flawless perfect route for this because you have to go up to him with a fully powered attack gauge, hit him, and then run all the way back to the bottom of the screen without getting hit for the second form. This takes 20 fully charged hits to do, and all of his sword swings are completely reliant on RNG, meaning he could just swing his swords whenever, for whatever reason, how many number of times he wants, just because. There is just no pattern to his second form at all, aside from him moving back and forth. Forward Viper's second form is just as bad as the dragon. And you can't heal. I basically had to basically abuse save states the entire time. And this is the third time in my entire Let's Play history that I've had to do this. The first being that stupid random chance minigame at the beginning of The Wizard of Oz, and the second being Clobber Carnage in Donkey Kong Country 2. When a game goes from having a whole bunch of easy bosses to something like this happening, where I have to abuse save states while recording so that it looks like a tool assisted flawless playthrough type of run, that's really bad. Now you can use pro action replay and actually use a code so that whenever you get hit you don't lose any energy, but if you're playing on the cartridge, you're out of luck. You have to get extremely lucky, and there's not always a, there is, not always, there is never a guarantee that you will, when you hit him, you will be able to run back to the bottom of the screen without Warlord Viper hitting you. You have to be lucky to get through the second form. It's stuff like this that really makes me wish that Manly and Associates playtested this. And we finally got those 20 hits in. We are able to get Trunk's Key of Truth. And as long as he has it, he can actually swing his axe faster. Which is something we could have used for this battle. Oh my gosh. Well, now that we got two more Keys of Truth, we have to head to Hadrian's Wall and use the Staff of Riothamus to break it. There's just one problem. Before we can go to where Morgana reigns supreme, we have to fix the Staff of Riothamus. How are we going to do this? and then move on to the Stone Gardens, which is our next destination. Well, we have to replace one of the guys in our party, and I'm just going to replace Zeke here because, well, I didn't use him this episode for any reason whatsoever, and I'm going to replace him with Tone. Tone has no shield. Keep this in mind. He is the only guy left without a shield. Now that we got Tone in our party, we have to exit. Once you head back to the area around Camelot, Tone will tell you that he can fix the broken staff, and he calls it the Staff of Rhinoceros for whatever reason. Arthur corrects him, then he gives him the pieces, and then Tone fixes them. And as soon as he does, you hear an explosion all the way from the other side of the continent, where Morgana is. Arthur tells Tone to keep the staff and use it in battle. And Tone's like, cool, just call me Rhinoceros Man. Now, it's down to doing this battle one more time. And we'll probably be doing it a few more times before this whole Let's Play is said and done. But remember when I said that Tone was the last guy to have a shield? 
Well, let's check Tone's stats again. He has a shield because we fixed the staff and the game doesn't tell you. Ugh. Manly and Associates, what are you doing? And with this disappointment and frustration, I'm finally ending this episode. And boy howdy, I am totally going to rip this game a new one when it comes to my th final thoughts. I mentioned this in Crownwood Village, and I'm mentioning it again. So yeah, for the for those who want a TLDR explanation, this game is terrible. I hear voices in my head. They counsel me. They understand that Warlord Viper is probably one of the worst bosses of all time. <sighs> Join me next time where I take on Morgana's realm. So until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching, and do yourself a favor. Don't play this game. I'm playing this so you don't have to. No, seriously. Th this game makes Wizard of Oz look like Halo, and it's made by the same developers. Uh, see you guys next episode.